Hey everybody, Roy Isaac here from Saskatoon, Saskatchewan. You're watching TJV Trucker Josh on YouTube. <laughs> Well, Diesel, I'm oh, sorry. <laughs> I tapped your nose with the camera. I'm sorry. That was rude, man. Is that what you do in the morning? Hit people in the face with cameras? I'm sorry, Diesel. Look at me. I'm tired. I can't even see straight. You're a terrible person. Well, good morning, folks. Nobody woke me up and told me to move, so I guess this was actually a parking spot. Good. Good for me. I made a parking spot last night here at the Husky in Atchison, Alberta, near the back. It was pretty much packed everywhere when I pulled in. So we got our good sleep. Still a little tired. I think I'm fighting something off. I think that's what's going on with my body. I've been feeling like, even though I'm getting good sleep, I feel like I didn't get as good of a sleep. I, don't, I must be fighting some kind of bug off, but I'll be fine. So we're going to go pick up our lumber here in Edmonton and then head off home. And we should be home uh, tomorrow afternoon, I'm hoping. I want to be home before supper tomorrow. That's my goal. But, you know, trucking. Don't make plans. They always change. It's kind of a miserable day out today. Not to be a whiny whinerson, but... Hey, I don't like the rain. Actually, I like it. It's better than snow. Better than snow. Let's say that. Okay. We're all ready to go. I gotta go get this lumber. I'm not gonna pick it up just sitting around here. Let me get my gauges ready here. I gotta reset my fuel data and my tripometer for the day. I keep track of my instant fuel economy and my mileage every day so I know how far I've gone and how much fuel I've burnt so that I can adjust my driving patterns if need be. Because if I've got a tailwind and I realize I'm burning practically no fuel because I'm getting pushed along, well then I, I up my speed so that I can get there faster and still not use any fuel. But if I'm going against wind, then I have to sort of adjust it. Okay, 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 okay. I wanted to pick up this lumber much earlier than this, but I slept a little longer than I should have probably. But I wanted to make sure I was fully rested because I want to get as far as we possibly can tonight. We're going to be driving late into the night, but I want to get as close to home as possible so that I don't have much to do tomorrow because I don't want to be tired when I get home. I want to be awake and alive. Okay, you're turning. Thank you for using your signals. It's because you drive a Chevy. I like you. Let's drag our butts over to the lumber yard. Let's throw those sticks on the trailer. Let's tie them down. Let's not forget that crucial part. And let's book it home. Of course, my home time is all booked up and scheduled for me already. Well, not for me, by me. And I always have so much to do when I get home that uh, there's just not a lot of time to do nothing. I was hoping to have uh, a couple of days just to do nothing, but this load needs to be in Wisconsin and uh, I'm the man to take it there. The longest I can wait is to leave is Monday morning. So I'll still have Friday, Saturday, Sunday at home. Sunday we're going to my parents' campsite because we have a family gathering, uh, a late Mother's Day family gathering. Uh, and then, what else is going on? Saturday we might be going to Turn left on uh, Britt's dad and stepmom's campsite to help them build their deck. I, I want to help them do that if possible. And then Friday, I think Britt's friend is coming into town from Alberta. So, it's good. It's better than being bored, right? We always got stuff to do. I'd rather have lots of stuff to do and be running around than just be sitting around bored. Though some days, I want to I have to sort of schedule them now, like adult life. I have to schedule my bored days. I remember when I was a kid, a teenager, man, I was bored all the time. Always going to my mom. "Hey mom, I'm bored. What should I do?" Clean your room! I don't want to do that. What else should I do? Vacuum the floors! I don't want to do that. What else should I do? <laughs> I'm just going to watch TV. I was a typical teenager. Now, if I want to be bored, I have to like work it into my schedule. 
Be like, all right, two weeks from now, on Thursday, I'm gonna schedule a day to be bored, to do nothing. And then Thursday rolls around and I have 10,000 things to do and I'm not bored anyway. You know, I just like to play some video games. <laughs> I just wanna be a kid again sometimes. <laughs> all of you young people who still live at home with your parents, watching my videos. On right to Highway 16 East. Enjoy it. Enjoy it while you can, all right? When you feel bored, just enjoy that feeling of being bored because once you're an adult, you'll never feel it again. Never. <laughs> I don't even remember what it truly feels like. With actually nothing to do or actually feeling like I have nothing to do. Maybe I'm just more responsible now and I was more of a procrastinator and more lazy when I was a teenager. I was kind of lazy as a teenager, let's, let's be honest. And as an adult, mom's not there to do anything for me anymore. I'm on my own. I have a wife, a home, a business. If anything's gonna get done, I have to do it. Well, that's not true. At home, my wife does a lot. Everything at home, pretty much my wife does. She's, she's great. She's awesome. But for the business, for trucking, like now I gotta go pick up my lumber. No one's gonna do that for me. If, no, if I don't do it, I don't get paid. If I don't get paid, I can't pay my, like, pay for my house. If I can't pay for my house, I'm homeless. You get it. You get it. I'm just rambling. It's too early. I need my coffee. Let me in here. Hey, merging. Merging. Blinky thing means I'm coming in. Thank you. Thank you. Continue 10 kilometers on Highway 16 East. Lumber here, lumber there, lumber everywhere. Give me all your lumber, put it on my bed, I'll tie it down and take it to Wisconsin. Where would you like me? I'm following that guy right there, he's gonna tell me where to park. Where do you want me, buddy? Hey, bud, bud, you're supposed to point to where you want me. Right here? Aha, okay. my door open that is a piercing backup beeper that is evil I hate backup beepers you know a lot of yards they don't have backup beepers anymore they have like a backup scratcher sound instead of that annoying beep beep it's like a <coughs> sounds like the beepers broken I thought the beepers were just broken then I asked about it no that's just the way they are it's supposed to be less piercing to the ears but still noticeable so people know something's going on to look up and you know there's a tractor backing up. I'm like, that is thinking. That is thinking. Hashtag get rid of the beepers. <laughs> I hate backup beepers. I know what they're there for. I know they're to save lives. People gotta know you're backing up. I mean, there's gotta be a better way. Don't gotta annoy the heck out of the whole world. I got a grudge against them, okay? Leave me alone. He's just loading me up right now. There it is. Ouch. Listen to that thing. Oh, it's getting louder. He's getting closer. There is no mistake in this yard when he is backing up. I mean, you might still get run over because you're deafened and don't know what's going on, but at least, at least he's making a, a, a scene of backing up. No. This is just, uh, I think, economy lumber they're throwing on me. The cheap stuff to get me down to Wisconsin. So I'm guessing there must be some money to be made down in Wisconsin with something because I won't be making much with this stuff, but it does keep me moving and it's much better than just sitting here doing nothing, right? I could either make zero money and just sit here all by myself, well, with diesel, 
hang out until there's a good load. Or I can take this, which makes me a little bit of money and gets me moving to a place where there's better freight. Not a lot of good freight leaving Alberta. As I was saying, not a lot of good freight leaving Alberta. Uh, lots of good freight coming into Alberta, not much going out. Alberta is one of those provinces that grows, grows, grows. It's an oil rich province, right? It's a, it's, it's a very wealthy province, but it's uh, growing really fast all the time because of it. So obviously when you're growing, you need lots of materials to come in to build these buildings and infrastructure and stuff. And uh, they just don't produce as much. Most of the stuff that goes out of Alberta is like oil, uh, natural gas, and they got pipelines for the natural gas. Uh, fun fact for you, the natural gas that heats our home way out in Manitoba, a uh, thousand miles from here, a little under that, about 800 miles from here, comes from pipelines from Alberta here, underground all the way to Manitoba, through the network, all the way to my house, through my furnace, and it heats my home. Oil, I don't know how they, I know that they're trying to get a lot more pipelines built or put in the ground for oil. Right now they transport all the, a lot of the oil by rail. And there's a lot of, you know, there's a chance of derailments that way. And with a pipeline, at least, it, it lowers the risk. It's got to get out of here one way or another. You, you can't live without it, unfortunately. I mean, there's a lot of people out there that think that we can live without fossil fuels. Maybe in the cities, but how are you going to feed yourselves, right? The, the Growing up on a farm, the amount of fossil fuel, well, not the amount of fossil, but the, just the reliance on fossil fuels to farm and agriculture to make food for you. If they didn't have access to that, there's no way you would have food to eat. That's that's the biggest thing. I gotta sneeze. Oh boy. Talking about these meaningless things again. What am I saying? They're not meaningless. Meaningless to some of you, I guess, but meh. It's just my belly button, you know? Everybody's got a belly button. Everybody's got an opinion. Number. Wisconsin lumber. Oh, so this has been an interesting day and afternoon. Oh, it's actually been an interesting ride. Ever since we had that water damage in our home, we've been fighting with, well, not fighting with, we've been dealing with our insurance company who doesn't want to insure us. Of course they don't want to insure us. They wouldn't be an insurance company if they actually wanted to insure people. Now that I'm all fueled up, I'll be good until we get to Balgoni. I thought the fuel price would be a little cheaper here. It was $1.29.9 per liter. I was told on the Flying J or Pilot Flying J app that it was going to be $1.27.9. Liars! Not cool. Two cents per liter. Very disappointed. Apparently everywhere else likes to close up at like six o'clock. So what is this, Steinbeck? The Husky's always open 24 hours. They got the coffee, they got the good stuff. That guy in front of me there, with the trucks on the back of his trailer, he's got two, two trucks on his trailer, two semi-trucks. I don't wanna like be, sound like a know-it-all or uh, an alarmist or anything, but He's got those trucks tied down, each of them tied down with only two straps, no chains. Just one strap back and front on each truck. Four all together for two semi-trucks. I don't know about you guys, but I don't think that that's up to code or up to uh, regulation. As he was passing me over there, just bouncing around. The straps aren't even that tight. He's got one strap going over the frame. Oh wait, this last truck here, he's got, he's got three straps. Okay, so he's got a strap around the front axle, a strap around the back axle or something, and then one strap over the frame between the fifth wheel and the cab. Three straps. Isn't there some kind of law about that you have to use chains on vehicles like that? I mean, I would. That's just me. I, like I said, I don't want to sound like a know-it-all or anything, but... Eh, make me a little nervous. <laughs> I won't ever be able to go through Saskatoon again 
without thinking of that trip we, Britt and I took here with Frankie to get his surgery done. Continue 850 meters, then keep left onto Highway 16 East. Of course Mandy's all business, I'm trying to say something nice here and she's all business. I really wish they had a little bit better truck access to that dog park. Yeah, I'd love to go back there. Which would be very difficult. I guess I could get a truck and trailer there, but it's not really made for it. And I don't think they want me to do that, especially fully loaded. But one day, if I ever get laid over in Saskatoon, I'll drop my trailer and bobtail in there. That was a lot of fun. In 350 meters, keep left onto Highway 16 East. Is work the only thing you talk about, Mandy? Do you ever talk about anything else? Getting kind of boring. What another long and boring day. Other than my rant about my home insurance, I really didn't have much to say today, did I? We're in Balgoni Baloney, Saskatchewan. Bunch of baloney over here. I'm gonna go buy some of their baloney fuel in Balgoni. I like their baloney chicken wings here too. Oh, wow, it looks pretty full here. I'm going to keep going. I want to go a little further yet. I'm actually going to grab a coffee here because uh, <laughs> Trucker Josh ain't done yet. You thought you were rid of me? Uh, I don't think so. Here's the wonderful Flying J right here. They got some some go-go juice for me. The diesel juice. The juices that keep me moving. Turn left on one. Quiet. I'm just gonna fuel up here because it's cheaper here. It's $1.26.9. Hey, that's nice. It was actually the right price. That's the same price that was on the app, unlike the Flying J in Lloydminster. It was two cents off. Wasn't very nice. Oh, look, my RV is here. Nice to know someone's taking good care of it while I'm waiting for retirement. Check this thing out. That is beautiful. I got 35 years and I'm coming for you. 35 years. That's beautiful. Wow. I'm not going to be pulling a Dodge though. What are you doing, buddy? Why are you going out the entrance? That's something I would pull. Just turn my headlights off, boy. I'm shining my lights into all these poor drivers' cabs. What is this, like Peterbilt Row here? What is this? Did I miss that big pothole or did they fix it? I didn't even notice. They, used, they have a huge pothole here. Pull ourselves around here. You guys sick of listening to my voice yet or what? Oh, and look at this, a pump open just for us. Diesel, look at this, we're gonna get death fluid too. Not death fluid, crazy, death, D-E-F. Death fluid, you guys crazy. Why are my, I got like my sleeves rolled up. Why didn't I just take my sweater off? Now I need to, it's cold out there now. Whew. Well, oh my, oh my, oh my, oh my, oh. Oh, wake up, Josh. I'm okay. What? Diesel, you want to drive for a bit? And thanks for watching the vlog, guys. It will be continued tomorrow. Appreciate you guys tuning in every day. Appreciate when you guys subscribe and like. You guys are awesome. All right, I'm pretty tired, but uh, we'll see you tomorrow. All right, take care and uh, keep between the lines.